Let's bring in our military analyst, Colonel Simon Diggins. And uh, good evening. I mean, the Kyiv attack, first of all, it seems to have been a substantial one. It was a substantial attack. It's not necessarily very different from what we've seen before. Uh, exchanges of missile, artillery and rocket fire across the front lines is actually part of the way in which this war has been, has been conducted. What we have seen in the film, of course, is actually even when the missiles were intercepted, and they were, the amount of damage which had actually done within, within uh, Kyiv itself, just the debris falling from the rockets or from the intercepted missiles being fired against them. So a significant amount of damage as well. What is interesting, though, about this particular attack is it was actually preceded by Ukrainian attacks into, into Russia itself. And there's two areas. One is around the area of Belgorod, which is just over the border in, in, into Russia itself, where there's been a combination of ground offensive and, and missile attacks. And secondly, and this is the one which is most, most directly linked, was an attack on their strategic bomber bases, uh, nearly 400 miles inside Russia from, from drones. And it was uh, aircraft from that particular base uh, in the area of Saratov, and you can see on the map here, uh, there, it was the, the bombs from, bombers from Saratov who then responded with the attack onto Kyiv itself. So there's a, sort of, there's, a, there's a back story to this, but yes, it is a significant attack, as I say, the, the first major attack on Kyiv in nearly six weeks. Right, and now, what do you make of the Institute for the Study of War um, saying that Putin is planning for a long, uh, conventional war with NATO? Yeah, I, there's a lot of truth in it. Now, obviously, what we're seeing with the, with the Ukraine war is that the Russians particularly have been gearing up their ammunition resupply. Um, we've seen, for example, that the, inside their ammunition factories, inside the munitions factories, they're now operating a sort of three-shift basis. So they were operating continuously around the clock in terms of uh, ammunition supply and everything that goes with that. The issue, which is what is coming out with the Institute of Study of War, is whether there's something beyond that. And here you have to start looking at some of the figures. At the moment, the Russians are spending about 6% of, of their GDP on military spending. That's, that's between 30 and 40% of their total government expenditure. Now, that's a way above and beyond what's necessarily required to fight this war. And so what we've seen is a series of warnings. The Institute of Study of War have just produced theirs, but we've seen the Baltic prime ministers, we've seen the heads of NATO, we've seen lots of former defence chiefs saying there's something else going on, and hence the warning that between three and five years' time, the Russians will be capable of conducting a significant conventional attack on NATO, and I think that's what everyone's worried about. And I mean, presumably this assumes a victory over Ukraine, or, 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 which is not a given. Not a given, but some kind of stalemate, yeah. some kind of thing from there. Now, there has been a response, Mark, very quickly, which is that you know, we have seen people like Grant Shapps starting to talk now about going to 3% of, of GDP. The government's official line, remember, is still 2.5% of GDP when fiscal and financial circumstances allow, yes. which could be anything. It's not a promise. It's not a promise. No. We're no. a long way from it. Yeah. Right? Okay, thanks very much.